Yes, the, the accumulators are now in operation. What's that? It's not radiant pressure now. Uh, e stop. Ah, I got the e stop. It, it depressurizes all of that for safety, so it, it won't even give you. Uh, Everything out. Yep, for sure. All right, you want to hold this? Um, what do I want to do? I kind of like to. Uh, what's that? Is there anything really to see until it gets to 21? I just want to just. Well, I almost want to uh, mess it up and have them uh, check it for me. You have some fun with that? <laughs> Let's do that. All right, give me a little bit. I'm gonna mess it up. All right, you ready to go? <laughs> That's going to be fun. Wow. Right? Go to one radio mail. Yeah. This sucker's busted. Yep. Yeah, this busted. <laughs> yeah, probably. So, without looking at this, okay, what's wrong with the machine? What's your first inclination of what component is messed up? The, the vertical plunger? Okay, so that's what everybody thinks is something's wrong with my vertical plunger, okay? Now, look at the monitor. Why do you keep making me <laughs> no, no, it's all good, it's all good. Okay, so now what looks like a vertical plunger, the monitor doesn't give a crap about the uh, the vertical plunger. No. It, that's not the issue. Now, what what do we what do we need to do in order to figure out? Okay, if, if it's if it's waiting on strap guard arms at bail position two, I want to know where the strap guard arms are at. So where's the strap guard arms at right now? At the bottom. And that's at bail position three, right? right. So something it. It sent the strap guard arms down, but, and, but it never saw it never saw it at bell position so you, two. So it didn't pick it up when it went down. So so that means I either have a bad sensor bar, I got a bad connection, or my magnets aren't reading right. So I'm looking at my strap guard arms. So what most people would see vertical plunger and spend a whole bunch of time trying to get it to go back up right. in a matter of seconds, you've isolated where it needs to go. Right. Okay. So um, let's go to the, well, here, let's, let's just use this for what we can anyway, okay? So my red and green lights. If it's waiting for strap guard arms at bail position two, actually, we're going to need the diagram, so. So uh, we're waiting on strap guard arms at bail position two, right? Okay, so first off, I want to see strap guard arms. Well, it doesn't say strap guard arms, it says bail position two. One, two, zero, or three, right? So bail position two, sensor bar, black wire, number six. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? One, two, so number six. If that's not lit, it's not reading. So we have some kind of an issue 
with the magnet being in front of the sensor bar in the right spot. Okay, and obviously it's not going to be lit because it's clear down here at the bottom. Right? So, now I want to see, uh, well, I guess I don't have to see right now, but I'm going to go ahead and go and say, what is the computer telling the machine right now? Okay, so I'm going to look over here at the green, and I want to see uh, strap dead arms, right? So, strap dead arm motor up, strap dead arm motor down. Should be down, so up and down is six and five. Number five is lit, so it's telling the motor to go down right now. It is sending it to find it. You see what I'm saying? So now what I can do is I can take my controls, I can open the vertical blinker up, okay? That way I'm taking weight off the bale, okay? And I can take my strap gut arms and I can run it up. Now when I run it up, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be able to stop it on the right spot if it's a black wire, if it's a blue line. Uh, so, blue line's about bad down in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. Sorry. Sorry about that. I was just looking where the blue line was on this. So I know bail position two is about right in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch that uh, that red light and see if it ever comes on. And it's, uh, it's number six. Red light six. Okay, so now I've isolated that it's got to be the sensor bar coming through. So first off, we're going to just check wire. And so what I did is I just came in here and I unplugged. I I pulled the wire out. Okay. So once I put that back in. I don't know where I put the screwdriver. I got it, man. So now, it doesn't know I put that wire back. It's not in the right position. I'm gonna just pass it by, okay? And you watch, um, I'm in manual mode, so it's not telling me anything right now. Uh, I'll just go ahead and go normal, okay? So I put it in normal position. Now it's actually telling the machine what it's supposed to now because I took it out of manual mode. And it's still saying strap good arms are sent down. So now since I got it in normal, I'm gonna pass it up where it's supposed to be because I fixed the problem. Now it was able to read it and now it's ready to go. You see what I'm saying? So once I fixed the problem, I had to put it in the position so it was able to read. And right. once it took that point that it was missing, it now it computes all the rest. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I thought I solved the problem. The whole time I thought I knew where the problem was. Those don't line up. I was thinking, I was thinking, uh -huh. say I can fix it right in the field. <laughs> Wrong but, problem. But that's, that's why you get the monitor, the monitor, the monitor, and then you use the red and green lights to decide how it's thinking. And there's no problem on here that you can't isolate and fix. That's okay. cool. If it's right. always the step before that screws up the one. The yeah. Just because that stuff, this machine's smart enough that it's like, hey, I'm not gonna sit here and tear myself up. I need this. And it's just gonna stop and ask for it. And uh, when people start manipulating the machine to make it do what they think it needs to do without giving it its input, that's whenever I got a whole bunch of stuff I gotta fix. When they're really called. Okay? Gotcha. So, so number one phone call that I get, operator error. Well, I, I can see that happening, but it's yeah. going to take me a while to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, it, but your monitor is going to tell you what to look for, because if it says strap gun arms, find strap gun arm here, find strap gun arm there, just kind of familiar yeah. yourselves yeah. with it, and then go from there. Okay? Right. But anyway, let's throw, I was making it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to blame it all wrong.
Oh, did you get a chance to see how it's built in the bundle in oh, there yeah. too? So you can yeah. just virtually see it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, you're going to want to have one of these screwdrivers, just the small ones. Just, I mean, they even work for the DIN connectors, even though you can use a great big screwdriver for it. But these things, it's not like carrying a big one in your pocket. You can lose these in your pocket. And if you have one in the tractor box or one in your pocket or shirt pocket or something like that, always have it. It's a lifesaver. Yeah. You think he's going to get mad at me for putting hay in that? Uh, let me do something here real quick. Hey, you want to take that off? I'll go ahead and lower that down. It's kind of in my way. This one brings it up. Does it kick it over to hit here? Yep. And does that chain stop if there's not bail there, or does it keep going? So this uh, this is ground driven, 100%. So if you oh, let it sit on the ground, it's going to do it. If you pick it up, it's going to shut it off. So you have control of that. I got you. I didn't think about the ground part. Yeah. And boy, that was whipping up and down. Um, it's newly put on, so there's a lot of air in the system. Once you work that out, it'll be a lot slower. You know what I'm saying? A lot more manageable. Hits the front of it, yep. kicks it up. Do you have much trouble with your kicker? What's that? Do you have much trouble with your kicker? Kick bail over? No. No. Um, worst case you're going to have with a kicker is if you get a crappy bail, it's going to uh, trip photo three. You know, your bail will be busted and the kicker will kick into it. But you just back it up and, yeah. In your scenario, though, uh, you can kill. When you kill the power and you kill the electric, you can grab a hold of that kicker as long as you got the pressure off of it and pull that kicker out of the way in order to clean it out. Okay. That's why I wanted to you know yeah. that it can't be compressed. If you can kick everything out, it's not compressed. Right? Yeah. There's a lot. It looks like there's a lot going on, but it just goes from step to step to step. As soon as it gets a bail, it processes it, processes it, goes to the next one. You know what I'm saying? There's a, lot, there's a lot going on at the same time, but in the computer's mind, it's only one step at a time. Okay? Three, four, five steps. Yeah, exactly. Well, that not be a problem picking this up and down and tripping that deal, or? Uh, it only tripped it when it was back in the supporting, and the reason it was going all crazy was that 
it's newly put on, so there's air in the line. Right. And once you get that air worked out of it, right. it'll be a lot more manageable. Right. But even if you flip it up and trip it, uh, drop it back down, run a bale into it, and it's done. You know what I'm saying? Once it processes the bale, it's back right photo one ready again. Oh, okay. You know so what I'm it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, yeah, it won't jump until that other one reads. Exactly. You're not gonna mess up until it reads. Yeah, and, and in your scenario with you having the iPad, even if for some reason chaff or whatever did trip it and shuts this chain off, you go over here to your controls, once you run that bale up on there, manually run your horizontal uh, thing, What's that? Do I have it shut off? Something's shut off. Let me throw a bail in her real quick. on a plunger and for and in order for that to actually happen you actually have to run sorry uh, so we threw a safety in there so that uh, someone can't jam the bales in there so in order for you to run your horizontal elevator you have to run your vertical as well you see what I'm saying so like say I'm in normal position right now you throw uh, a bale on there but you want it to run up uh, if the vertical chain's not running, you have to run your horizontal. So that's the horizontal chain, and that's the vertical chain. Vertical chain. So you have to, okay. So, see right now, it won't work. Right. Right? Watch so this. It stops. You want to be able to go on up in there. More than being a safety feature, it's actually that the hydraulics are actually coming from the valve that's running the vertical to run the horizontal. So it's not even just computer stuff, it's that the hydraulic flow has to flow through the circuit that's doing the vertical to get to the horizontal. So we're actually cutting down on the flow it needs by multi-using that oil. Huh. Goes through one and through the other. Yep. So as long as I don't sit here and try and do that, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, even if you do it, it's not going to hurt anything. You know what make I'm it, can you make it go down? I can, yeah. Yeah, and, and if I got a bell right here, I can shove it out. Can we there. take one of our garbage bills, throw it in there, and fill it Oh, I can down? see it. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get now because we're not yeah. pulling the bandit forward it's to run over it. Yeah, it's going to jam it down yeah. to the ground. But anyway, uh, here, take this. Go ahead. Go ahead and run your horizontal and I'll run it in. But now it's normal. Now it's back to Yeah, it's back automata. to normal. It's photo one ready on the belt. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's just gonna take redundancy. So get this. I've had guys have chaff on their photo too. Know it's on there, but know they can do that and they didn't want to get out of the tractor, so that's the thing. That's stupid thing. Yeah. I'm just like, you can't fix lazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Does this chain always stop? So I made a mistake. Yeah, so right now it is ready to go, waiting on it, everything, and it does not move unless it has a process that it needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, dude, those chains last crazy. Crazy. Yep. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, when bail 12 back floor was down, it was. It's already back up now because it's bail 14. So bail 12 back floor goes down. Bail 14 back floor comes up, and bail 15 the back gates close. So 
don't don't confuse this. This is overall bail count. You could be bailing for three years and never reset that, right? Uh, this is the bails in bundle. Okay, okay. Well, that's what I said at first, and then I saw that, and I said no, fourteen. <laughs> yeah, I was counting, but I could. I came up with twelve. I said, how do you do that? <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's 10 there and four on top. Well, so it, at 12, it went down and drug a bail out if it was there. Yes. Yeah, and then yeah, I'll two more. Yep. It picks back up. Okay. And then at 15, the back gate's closed. So I'm going to throw the 15th bail in there. And see how that bail's all staggered and raggedy and all that kind of stuff? You watch that thing when it compresses it. It'll... I think I can make, what's that? Are we going to have enough or do you need to find more bales? I think I'll make it work because a lot of these are just getting pressed in the side anyway, you know? Okay. They close and then they retract as well. So these are your tensioning rods. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just going to compact it. So the next three will, will straighten that out. Is that right? Uh, um, actually, six more. Uh, okay. Bale 18. Those bales are going to be right up against it, but not compressed. And bale 21 will actually compress oh, those okay. and straighten those out. Um, Just out of curiosity, I, I think he's interested too. Can you, can you take a really crappy bale? That'll be towards the end so we can see when it comes out what happened. Like this one, you got a bunch of things. You can lay that the right way and then leave the Oh, see, the see how it straightens it up? Yeah. Um, you're going to want to see that more in the middle than on the corners because you, you do want good bales on your corners. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, we've had guys mess up and not have the correct number right there at the end. And um, you can actually miss any of the four corners and it'll still be an okay bundle. Just make it go ahead and tie. Make it go. You'll have an ugly bundle. There'll be 20 bales in the bundle, but it'll still it'll still package it and make it tight. But you still got to have the four rows or the five, six rows. Yeah. Seven rows. You Seven just, rows. You yeah. Have one missing. How do you miss one? Uh, meaning you run out in the field. field. So you got if four bales left. Say a bale busted and you didn't get it back in, and you know just something weird happened or whatever. Yeah. Now, if you bust it and it reads everything, then you've got to open up, turn everything off, open up open the door and shove it in that little hole. Yep. And hopefully it's not the last bale, right? Or you got enough room on the last uh, bale? On bale three, you got to shut it off before the horizontal plunger pushes back. Okay. Or otherwise, you got to do a couple different things. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. I'll still be sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> Where's my phone? <laughs> Where's my phone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But anyway, um, you can do anything you want to. It's not going to move until you get that red ring off of there. Now, you guys won't have to worry about that so much with the other just because, it's, you know, any any manual stuff that you can do here, you can do with the reed switches and all that as far as the, uh, the DIN connectors and manually shifting those. Um, but it's just a little bit more involved, you know. I don't think we have to worry about this. Okay. <laughs> Not yeah. today. No. Not today. No, but maybe. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, so I'm going to throw Bell 18 in, let you guys see how close it is to the back, and then whenever I go to the. What's that one open for? What's that? Why is it something? Um, so whether you have the back gates closed and you're going down the road, or you have them open, you can unpin this and move it out so it's square with the back of the road. Nobody ever changes it, but. I was just curious. I didn't sell insurance. That. Gotta love it. Um, I'll do that on bail 18. They're wanting to see what a tractor bell looks like going in, so I'm going to give them a full on busted. Which side do we put it on? This I'll side it should actually stay. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, guys, you're going to you're gonna see a crappy bail. It's not going to go in. Possibly. Well, okay, so it's not actually going to go in the machine like this, but if I continue to bail and have another bail push it on up in there, that's where you have issues up there. Go in. Most of the time they won't go in like that. Uh, okay? I'm so, impressed. One, one time. time. One, one time. Yeah. They're going to still, huh? <laughs> That's not recommended. Yeah. Actually, the trunnels on that side are kind of exploding. Oh, it is trashed. Yeah. yeah. Especially how spongy that hay is. Yeah. All right, guys. So, uh, two more. Up on top. Okay, so this is the most. Uh, hey, man, I'm gonna walk through the whole steps, and then as soon as you throw it in, then I'll get to see it. So this is like the most exciting part, right? You see how it ties and all that kind of stuff, but you're gonna be like super disappointed whenever it happens so fast, and you're like, okay, I want to see that again. <laughs> so uh, typically, it kind of helps if I step it through. Uh, so the last bale is going to come in, it's going to push it down, horizontal plunger is going to compress this, okay. As soon as photo 3 reads bale 21, you're going to see these guys barely shift out, okay. Uh, we call them mid-bands, mid-stroke, right. You're going to see them barely shift out. And as soon as the horizontal plunger has completely compressed the bundle, okay, these fetchers are going to go fetch it, okay. They're going to go out. They're going to open up, okay, and then the strap gut arms are going to come to the top position and they're going to slip in behind and then bring them back. Now, when these fetchers go forward, they're going to leave this strap laid over the bander foot, okay? They're going to lay it right over top of this bander foot because it's going to be mid stroked out. Right. So when they send forward, open up, strapping comes up, it grabs it, brings it back, lays it over the top of it, and at that point, these banders will full stroke out. Okay, which will cause this head to be over top of this. Okay, they'll stamp it and cut it all at the same time, lift back up, they'll come together and let that sucker drop through. Okay, yeah. you ready? I'm ready. All right, yep, yep. That compresses, they're going to pull forward, length of strapping over, comes up, touches it, slides it back. You're good to go. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. Now it takes another bundle to push that out. Right? Yep. Bell 12, it drops, bell 15, it closes, and, or 14 goes up, 15, it closes, and bell 21 does it again. Huh. Uh, so do you need to kill anything right now to stick that in there or can you leave everything active? We can leave everything active because we're not actually going into the machine. Not going okay. Right um, Zero. Yeah. So notice how I can't stick a bell in there right now? So at this point, we're, we're, we're done for the season, we're done for the whatever you want to do. You want the bundle out, right? You don't want to leave it. Uh, you can even do, like for him, if he was a Model 200, you can uh, go ahead and set your uh, iPad for the strapping to zero, bail until it stops, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you wanted to stop it like that, or you can just count how many bales to throw in and stop at the bail 21 like it is right now. Horizontal plunger is not going to go forward until it sees another bale. Okay? It's perfect time to replace strapping, all that kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to throw one bale in for the next bundle in order to get the horizontal plunger back. Okay?
That's probably the best one in it. Good. So at this point, where's the monitor at? You got the iPad? Just go ahead and kill, kill the east out for me, uh, just because I am kind of getting my hands in there a little bit. So, grab this. Okay, so I'm taking it out of the pass of the strapping so it doesn't wad that up. Oh, uh, you want to? Turn the e-stop back on for me. And then if I have some extra bales around, you can put four in there and you can back the back floor down. Yeah, and then you just take these out by hand when you finish up, right? Oh, just FYI, this switch, there's no way for the computer to know whether it's switched or not. So if you start bailing and you forget this, your your back floor is just going to stay down. What's this switch? Uh, that's your uh, uh, if you're going down the road and you want flashers on, that's your back okay, flash that's light. Light. Yep. That's floor. Yep. That's front. Yep. Horizontal. Horizontal. Yes. Shove it in. <laughs> so I typically like to use four, but that's close enough. With four, you don't have to wiggle it. So this bell right here was the one with one string. You're never going to know it. Until you go to take it apart. Right? Yep. <laughs> well, it's just going to be what you set your expectations up to them. Say, hey, this is the price I'm selling to you for. There's going to be a couple busted strings. You know? Uh, it's Timothy, I think, isn't it? I don't know for sure. I don't know. Dude, yeah. that almost looks like a little bit of a mixture of uh, alfalfa, too, doesn't it? Yeah. We can pull this out if you want. Good thing about really slippery floors. Yes, exactly. Pretty bad thing, but... Yeah. Hey, I could just manually go in and get those out. Yep. Put it out. Yep, sure, it's awesome, man. So those all look yeah. good. What was the bad one a while ago then? That wasn't now this one? No. No, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Had me concerned. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Going, absolutely, man. So it's time good. Yep. Looks easy. Yeah. Long this bundle looks was. horrible. Uh, so this bundle looks horrible. Well, like, it's high yeah. It doesn't, yeah. It's already shrunk, doesn't have the night. I mean, when those bales come out and you're just talking crisp, clean hay. Yeah.
Yes. So I've got one closed in before you yep. ever got in there or anything. Yeah, yep. I shut it off just because I know we're probably going to do more to it or whatever and just uh, whatever. But like at this point, uh, you wouldn't want to store it like that. You want to make sure that you hit reset bundle because it thinks there's one bale in there right now. Right. Um, make sure you pull the strapping back out on the... Uh, hmm. Would yeah. you store it with the unthreaded? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I wouldn't so, unthread it. I never unthread a machine unless I'm putting new strapping on. Okay. Yeah, if it's, if it's inside, you can go right down there. Sounds a great. On, no. Dude, I've, I've seen uh, rusted up uh, spools of sure. strapping, put it on there. It doesn't hurt the strength of the strapping, nothing. No. I'm sure there's a limit, but. You just haven't found it yet. I haven't experienced it. Yeah. There's probably a lot I haven't experienced yet. Yeah, you're still a young buck. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a. Been around a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be a nightmare to get started, though. I think I'm, I'm just, not a nightmare, but just. There's the learning curve. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All and you. There's, you got, oh, you got you get that telling when your stuff. tractor viewers is, oh, I'm good. Heck, I still got to get all rigged up, though, get a plug and all that. And oh, I thought I was pretty much done. Um, so had you, was you familiar with plugging it into the uh, return line, in, or uh, right yes. to the tank and all that? The, the guy I watched had his just like that, but mm -hmm. I, didn't, I don't remember seeing a plug. I didn't even realize he had it plugged in, too. Oh, for the electrical mm -hmm. plug. What okay. goes in there? What's that? So the way I run a bandit is I take the Pioneer coupling off oh, yeah. and I put the mail to this and oh, I plug it. the mail to it. No, this is the Pioneer coupler. That'll okay. fit my tractor. Yes, yeah. and that's why we put them on. That's what 95% yeah, of everybody's got. got. Where do you get that one at? I've never seen one. So seen we've got, okay. they're just Safeway okay. couplers. You can get them, well, I don't know how common, they're common to us, yeah. but. Yeah. Um, they're common to you? No, we don't run this big equipment. That's what I was no, this say, isn't I, big, but I mean, I've we've seen. got some great big stuff, but up here is a little different. different I like the idea deal. that it can't come out, because, yeah. hell, we have them come out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't ever have a problem. I haven't had a problem. But this is directly okay. into the pump. Little hint, okay? Especially people that's just hooking up their balers and everything, they don't have their hose oh, links okay. right and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you go, it's warm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you go up and down the ditches and whatever, sometimes if the hoses are a little loose, um, your Safeway coupler will catch the dirt or whatever and pop it loose, right. but it'll stay together. Yeah. And it'll just stay right there where it's not engaged, but it looks together. And people are like, I was just bailing and it stopped. Yeah. And so we started attacking it and whatever, and we'd, be, we'd like ask what Red 7 was, and it's like, well, it's in the middle. Well, on a two-directional valve, so you're vertical plunger, your kicker, your um, horizontal plunger, all those are just two directions that have one dent to it. Well, they can only be full or reverse unless they don't have hydraulic oil. And so it's a telltale sign. If you look up and that kicker cylinder is partially stroked out, your return line came unhooked. Like I'll, I'll never be able to tell you if you missed anything. <laughs> You'll never be able to feel like a fool if you always check to make sure there's power and hydraulics before you call it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you'll know if they're powered because the lights are lights on, on, the, on the, and the iPad will tell you probably. Yeah, if yeah. I was going to ask you, no power it will tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it will so tell you if you're uh, on you your monitor as well. Um, the, it'll say no sure. connection or whatever. And that's and it's going to mean hydraulic. Uh, no, it's going to mean electric. Oh, electric. No, there's nothing to tell you whether the hydraulics are connected oh, I or not. Saying, I, I thought that's it's, what he was talking about. Was no. Hydraulic. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I was meaning that just get out, look, make sure your hoses are actually connected. Um, yeah. Pull on them. Yeah. Because, like, that Safeway coupler right here, it could, it's never going to happen here because nothing's going to pull on it. But, like, in between your baler or whatever, if this gets slipped back a little bit, it'll literally look like it's hooked up. Oh, so that one? This I one. I thought that one wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, so only if it's, like, between the baler where it's dragging on the ground. Sometimes it can get pulled back. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I missed that one. Yeah. yeah. It's that the little bearings and sides that pop in and out got the other side of the lip. Yeah. All right. I think I pretty much hit it all. One and the other. <laughs> oh, we can go deeper if you want. <laughs> <laughs>